Hello, friends. We at From the Middle want all of our guest interactions to be as authentic as possible. At the same time, we want to make sure that the middlers out there feel respected when it comes to the things that we put hurling toward their ears. That being said, we recently had the opportunity to interview two of our friends, Jordan and Haz, from Grief Burrito, a podcast out of the UK, onto our little show to discuss their podcast, to discuss their stories. They were kind enough to come on and, and be silly with us, be serious some, from time to time with us. They are two very funny and friendly and witty guys who, in their own words, do enjoy putting a little seasoning into their vocabulary. So, if conversational F-bombs and the occasional crass joke is not your thing, we understand. You do what you need to do. We still love you. You have been warned. It all starts in three and two and one and... <coughs> oh, for the love. <laughs> Sorry, just clearing my Mountain Dew hole. <laughs> I got my phone hole clean today. That's where you keep it? You're so cerebral and you're so developed and evolved. Hello, everyone, and welcome to episode number 65 of From the Middle. We are three middle-class guys in the middle of America in the middle chapters of our lives with a point of view that, yes, is somewhere in the middle. I am here with my regular co-hosts, Kendall and Dylan, as well as two guests from the outrageously popular comedy, gaming, and uh, film podcast, Grief Burrito. We have Harrison Wilde, as well as Jordan Shenton, reporting live from Nutsford, UK. Hello, guys. How are you? Hey, dude. Hello. How are we? <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for joining us. We're so excited to have you on. All right. It's amazing to be here. I've Thank you. loved your show for a hell of a long time. And yeah, I can't believe what we're doing it. I'm really happy. Really That's good. very, very kind of you because we're fans of yours as well. And uh, so excited to get into all things geek culture, gaming. We might even do a little bit of, uh, you know, learning about podcasting from you guys because we're trying to get on your level. Yeah, more than happy to help you where we can. <laughs> that is way too kind. You guys are way too nice. <laughs> and I think it was like the, I, nobody has to look this up or fact check, but like number one gaming podcast in the universe. Like oh, best yes. over 600 countries or something. I don't remember. Oh yeah, yeah that's like, what I heard. Something like that. Yeah. Something like that, yeah. We stopped counting at 600. Fact. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I've lost count. Yeah. Yeah. Top 600 or so in, in the world of all universes. Perfect. Dylan, yeah, when, how did when we, we got uh, the best of England, that was fine. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Dylan, how did we bump into these fine gentlemen? What was the uh, original connection, just to give our listeners some context? Yeah, I think we've talked a little bit on the cast about how our different social channels kind of offer different things. And, and the, Twitter, the Twitter interaction is with a lot more podcasts, actually, where more of our fans probably steer to Facebook. Um, and, and so it's just been a lot of fun interacting with the podcasting community on Twitter. And, uh, and I think that's how we bumped into each other. Yeah, I think that's right, yeah and start yeah. checking out other shows and and recommending other shows other than just yours and and uh, i think that's how we bumped into you guys and, and we started a little messaging back and forth and uh turns out you also happen to put on a, a spectacular show as we mentioned so it makes it easy to want to keep following along with folks that are doing a really high quality show and uh you were you were kind enough eventually to let us bug you into getting on our on our cast here so no, it wasn't uh, bugging us at all we're happy to be here definitely like the the twitter community like Jordan, you started to be introduced to this more now. Yeah. The, the groups of podcasts on Twitter are amazing. Like everyone is just about supporting each other. Like everyone wants to help and listen to new shows and recommend if, oh, if you like this, well, have you heard these guys? Cause they're very similar. Mm -hmm. And even on, on Reddit the other day, I, I posted, I don't know if you all saw it yet. Someone recommended our show. And then the next thing they said was also listen to from the middle. And I was like, holy fucking shit. Can I swear? Am I okay swearing? Sure, you do you. <laughs> yes. Okay, right. It's the so, immediate like, fucking. Wait. Okay. Wait, I go on. <laughs> yeah, so they recommended us and then you right away. And then my cousin saw it and sent it to me. And she was like, have you seen this? And I'm like, what's weirder is that we're guesting on these guys on Sunday. So that is going to blow this person's mind out of the water. Wow. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So That's cool. so fun. 
That's yeah, so, so fun. Sh- uh, I can't remember what the name was. It was like Hibernetica. So shout out to you. Your dreams just came true. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Well, that's good company that they're uh, putting us with if we're with you guys. So that's, that's very cool. Um, We we start off the show and and we, we originally started this thing because I'm sure most people only hear about the extreme versions of Americans, right? The far left Mm -hmm. and the far right. And so we try to maintain this sort of centrist point of view. Like we're just regular old guys in the middle of our lives in the middle of America. Mm -hmm. So tell us about you guys' backgrounds, both individually. And then as a podcast, we would love to sort of, learn a little bit more about you before you dive into the meaty meat of our conversation. Okay. Well, Jordan, you go first. You, you kick it off. Uh, all right. Yeah. So I'm from, I'm from Macclesfield, which is a town near where has from, which is Nutsford. Uh, and I just play video games a lot. That's about it. <laughs> That's, That's it. my life. <laughs> yeah. No, it's, um, I work in it. So I've, I've always been love computers and then I've always been on YouTube, stuff like that, bit of Twitch. And then I was doing the editing for Haz and the old host, Jono, mm-hmm. who we miss. We do. I can't yeah. listen back to the podcast anymore. Mm. It's like, yeah. I remember when I first started coming on, I was like, oh, this is great, but I can't wait for Jono to come back so I can actually listen again. And then he never came back. Yeah. <laughs> well, we, oh, had him, we had him on yeah. for the birthday episode, didn't we? So we, we oh, did get him back. Amazing. Nice. That was such good fun. Yeah. I think we, maybe we'll do it again for episode 100. Maybe yeah, we'll definitely. do like another big thing like that. Um, like we met quite a few years back now. Uh, was it about five or six years, something like that, Jordan? Yeah, some house party. Yeah, no, house party. That's right. Jordan was quite a bit younger than me. It still is quite a bit younger than me. Like we we age <laughs> you know, linearly as how oh, okay. time progresses. You know, um, <laughs> it's so weird. I always think it's different. Like it, you guys are in a different time zone than we are. So I was, but thank you for clarifying. It's all right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yes. When we fly back, we, oh, it's seven hours now. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Yeah, so we we met there. Um, I'd been, well, I'd been friends with some of your friends anyway. And then once we started the podcast off, because I've yeah. been working in, I work in television production freelance and I do graphic design and that kind of stuff. So I've been sort of in digital media for quite a while, but I wanted to do something completely freelance myself. And I'd, I'd got into podcast. I can't even remember when really. I remember one of my friends had been listening and I was like, I cannot listen to that. I can't sit with headphones in all the time, listen to some random people I don't know, talk about shit that I don't know. And now I do that like eight hours a day, every single day. (laughs) And I was like, I could, we could totally do this. So me and Jono were really drunk one night after university because we went to night uni. Um, So it was like midnight and we we ended up chatting and was like, right, let's do it. So I bought some mics and we started doing it. And then Jordan joined, started editing on our YouTube channel for our gameplay stuff. So it was me and him doing gameplay on YouTube, like Let's Plays, that kind of thing. Uh, and then once Jono didn't have enough time to do it because his work got really busy, Jordan stepped in. That was like episode 14, I think. Something like that. And then we've just recorded 76, like... 76 today. Literally yeah. like 20 minutes ago. Yeah. And then we've got another one to record after this which is 76.5, which is the bonus episode. So today is a busy day. We've got three episodes going today. Wow. Yeah, um, yeah it's, it's crazy. My I'm voice, so glad we could move it back because <laughs> yeah, I was I slightly hungover this morning. <laughs> I was like, oh no. I woke up yeah. like, this is not great. Yeah, you sent pictures to me last night, didn't you? Of you and your mates with beers, like, oh, and I was like, oh God, he's going to be rough tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> you were polite enough to not say anything about it, though. I appreciate oh, I don't that. Care. Yeah, I don't <laughs> care. It's funny. So when you're like, uh, it just makes for a funnier episode sometimes. <laughs> How are you, Jordan? How was this loud noise? Like, <laughs> just crying. <laughs> are you coping with my voice? <laughs> uh, well, that's yeah, great. I'm, what a, What a cool. Uh, uh, I love what you said in there has about, you know, we just sort of started, right? Like, yeah. believe it or not, for some strange reason, people are now asking some of us advice on podcasting and we're like, <laughs> we don't think we're worthy of giving advice. But that's the one thing we've said is like, just don't overthink it and just lean into it and start. Yeah, that's, and that's the hardest thing. And it, it goes with that for absolutely anything. Like people don't start. The hardest step is the first one. And eventually you gain enough momentum that it just happens every single day. So like I, I struggled at first like editing the episodes every single day. Cause like ed- to edit an hour's content every day or more, if we're doing the YouTube channel, it starts to get difficult, but then eventually it becomes just part of everything you do every week. And it just becomes a rolling ball. And eventually it just keeps going. And now we're kicking out two or three episodes a week. And it's just, 
it just happens and it just fits and it's great and you start to love it and then the more you put out the more people hear stuff and it's just you just then you meet up with great other shows like you guys and you just build a little podcast family made some great. amazing friends out of yeah. this like people i talk to like almost daily it's Damn unreal right. but it's um it's like the the thing we do with recording or especially myself is i think if I was listening to this, I'd love it. So it helps that it's like, if we find other people that like the same thing, it's a great way to find people that are like-minded. Yeah, and exactly. that's, you get on with people. It's mm -hmm. great. I yeah, don't think I've like, met one person I dislike out of all of the podcasting, uh, podcasting community, <laughs> things like that. No, no, not at all. I mean, there's, there's some shows that can be overtly negative sometimes. And yeah. I, I will definitely say that I've unsubscribed to some shows because of negativity. Like you use podcasts to escape. Like I like to be happy. And it, it's funny, like you guys, even when you complain about something, you're still really wholesome about it. And I'm like, usually I'm like- the most wholesome <laughs> show on the internet. <laughs> and it is amazing to listen to. You need that as a tagline. You really need it as a tag. Because like sometimes I listen to a show and I'm like, oh, fuck this ass mango. I can't listen to this negative shit. And you guys, I'm just like, fuck yeah, fuck that yeah. thing. And I'm just like, yeah, you know, I don't know. Like, you guys were talking about uh, boating the other day and building like craft rooms that you've been building. And like, I was like, I could build a craft game room. I could have like a latch that comes out and I could have a game shelf with all my consoles and shit. You know, I mean, you, I don't know. I just enjoy your show for what it is. Like, how did you guys start? Like, why, where did you start? <laughs> just take so, <laughs> yeah, uh, any of you take it so it was i don't remember exactly Corey had mentioned to me at at one point in time i i had not known dylan the podcast is how i know dylan oh, okay um <clears throat> but uh but i've been friends with Corey, and a long time ago Corey had said something about how he's always wanted to to have a podcast with his brother or or mm -hmm. or something and they've kicked around the idea of youtube and then and then Corey had started to get into listening to podcasts and uh and so i just kind of like i tucked that away in the back of my head um and then over the course of time like i, I started to get more and more interested in it as well uh and for me it was like a, and I, and this is why I would say we don't want it to be a hurdle for anybody who wants to start a podcast. If, if you have a smartphone, you have enough equipment to start a podcast. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but, uh, it just so happened that, uh, because of what I do with, uh, with worship leading and mm -hmm. tech stuff and, and, uh, and, and hobby and recording music and that kind of thing, like I have gear. Right. And so there's, there's a, there's a big step there that, that we already had. And so I, I kind of told Corey, there was a, for, for other recording purposes, there was a particular kind of board that I was getting a hold of. And I told Corey, I was like, dude, as, as soon as I get this, like, we'd be go. ready if you want to <laughs> yeah, start he, now. I think it was one Sunday after church, you were like, I literally have everything that you would need to start a podcast if you were serious about that. And I was like, yeah, let's do it. <laughs> yeah. So that was... I could see the excitement on your face then. You're like, yeah, yeah, let's go. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's but, happening. So, so that Jordan... was me like, like butting in a little bit, I feel like. On, nah. on Corey saying you want to start a podcast with his brother. And I'll be like, yeah, well, I, can I play? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, I have stuff. <laughs> I brought oh, a ball. Great. I brought a ball. Can I play? It was great. And Jordan, to your point, you know, one of our metrics, if you will, we did a little pre-thinking and dreaming about what, what did we want this to be and not to be. Mm -hmm. And we said, we don't want it to be negative. There's enough of that going on. Yeah. And we want it to be something that if you heard the conversation and we were sitting at a booth at a restaurant somewhere, you'd go, I want to sit down and just chat with these guys. Yeah. Um, yeah. And so you what's beautiful them. about, about yeah, you guys' <laughs> thing and, and what's beautiful about you guys' podcast is like, I feel like <clears throat> I'm living vicariously through you guys a little bit because I'd play a lot more video games if I didn't have these kids. Yeah. <laughs> so that's so like, kids. it's like Paz and Jordan are what I would be if I didn't have kids and responsibilities. <laughs> Not that you guys don't, but like so much less so. And I'm like, man, that just, it's really, really cool. It's like, we're, we want to be big kids. We've always been big kids, always been into gaming and geek culture and comics and cartoons. And, and so I started hearing a lot of them going, I we could do better than that. Like there's a lot of bad ones yeah. out there. Um, yeah, and yeah. so it was kind of like this fun, you know, adventure slash experiment to just see what it could be. And you guys have probably heard us quote Bill Burr, who had told somebody else about podcasting that you'll do a hundred episodes before you know what it is. 
And yeah, so we were yeah, like, completely. let's just start and see what it becomes. And so. Yeah, you've just got to go. And like, you'll, you'll look back on early episodes that you've done and been like, oh, the quality is shaky. <laughs> and yeah. like our most downloaded episode is still episode zero. And it was recorded in <laughs> Jono's empty flat where he just moved in with wooden floor nothing on the walls, not a sofa, everything is echoey to shit. And it's on like old Yeti microphones. And when I hear it, I'm like, oh, please don't listen to that one. <laughs> they still listen to it, but I don't want to remove it because I'm sort of like, I want to remember where we've come from yeah. and how much we've evolved through that. And I hope that listeners listen to that and aren't put off and that they will continue to listen to the newer ones. Yeah. So if someone says, oh, I've listened to episode zero, I'm like, excuse the sound quality. I promise it's got better. Yeah. Maybe start with halfway through and then go back if you feel like you want to. Um, but yeah, it's good. I, I, I won't remove it. I've decided yeah. just now I'm not removing it. It's going to stay. Yeah, <laughs> it's a good general rule of thumb. If you're starting to listen to a podcast, start with the newest episode first yeah. Yeah. because you'll That's see advice. them at their best. And then if you choose to go backwards, you can yeah. see the journey right. kind of in reverse <laughs> because <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's, it's, uh, the audio quality is not great on episode zero. <laughs> It's yeah, not no, it's not. I actually found a podcast I was I was digging through, you know, for reviews and checking out different things. They went back and pre-recorded a message before episode one, basically as a disclaimer. Oh and, wow, that's a good that's idea. Such a good way. idea. Because yeah. they had been doing it like if it, I don't I don't even remember which one, but they had been podcast podcasting for like five years. And so they said, Hey, we've done a lot of content since then. The audio quality has changed be aware that it's evolved exactly what you just said, but they literally put in like a 30 second snippet uh, before their first episode, which I'd never heard before. No, uh, I think I might have to do that. That's a good idea. <laughs> That's a really, really good idea. Thank yeah. you so much. <clears throat> and it's I really good to save the podcast. Yeah, <laughs> it's really good for us overthinkers too, who are like, should I delete it? Should I not delete it? Should we tell them? I don't exactly, want to tell yeah. them. Cause then it looks like I'm, then I'm trying too hard. Okay. But if I don't do it, it's, it's exhausting. <laughs> someone gets it and there's no episode one, two, three, four, five, six. Well, who starts at seven? I ain't listening to this shit. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. I completely agree. <laughs> so my first introduction to you guys was actually episode 69. Oh, nice. The sexy episode. <laughs> the sexy yeah. episode. And that yeah. was such a hilarious and awkward episode to come in on. Oh, like, here's the, yeah. here's the I remember. Moment, yeah. Here's the moment that you guys had me. You guys started talking about that you were going to talk about these oddly sexual moments in video games. Cue the 70s porno music in the background. And I was like, yes, I'm going to listen to these guys forever. <laughs> I, I, I had no like idea question. that there was that much weird stuff in video games. Uh, oh, so much. So yeah, much. we that was just like, do you know the iceberg meme where it's like you can see like just what's above the water? Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. Like that. we barely oh. covered that. Barely, <laughs> yeah, we'll barely go back. It. We'll go back. To yeah. that point, though, you guys, I mean, I'm so interested in the back end a little bit about, uh, I shouldn't have said back end after episode after 69. The, <laughs> The, the behind the scenes, if you will, of, of, of your show specifically, because you have a lot of really fun sound effects and like even the thing at the end when you recommend something like things that we watched and played to recommend to you or whatever it That's is. That's so nice to hear you say that. That was perfect. That was <laughs> whatever really it is. Perfect. It's like, I love all those little things that you do. So how much of you guys is, you guys are very fast and quick witted. How much of that, and sorry, Kendall, I'm stealing your question. It's cool. It's cool. How how much of that is just because you guys have such good chemistry? How much of that is post, and how much of that is you're just really well researched going into it? Uh, oh, it's a big combination, really, isn't it, Jordan? Like when when we record, we tend to get very. We have <laughs> this is sort of behind the scenes for you. Do you want to explain what big dick energy is, Jordan? <laughs> oh. <laughs> Big Dick Energy, or BDE, as we like to call, it, call in it, it in the scriptures. Yeah, uh, yeah so <laughs> we, we, at the start, like, like today, uh, we were talking just a little bit before. So I was playing in Call of Duty, I think, while you were getting stuff ready because you'd just yeah, been yeah. out. So I was like, I was tr trying to amp myself up instead of just be going from playing games to like being funny. Because being actively, trying to be actively funny, I'm not going to say I am funny, yeah. is... <laughs> is difficult to do so you've mm -hmm. got to like we'll just shout at each other and just be like big dick energy <laughs> ah, big dick yeah, you just you get <laughs> hype you know big dick back and forth <laughs> and then we're just like are you ready go 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 and then we hit it and then it yeah. works so it, it's like getting hyped in the locker room before like a, a football game or something like that you've got <laughs> to like football. 
Yeah, sport ball. Uh, I'm going to do six points. You just got to get hype. And then it, <laughs> it sort of comes across in the show that way. So mm. you kick off at a running start almost. Yeah. Um, the, the little sounds, like that, that thing that you mentioned then, the, the recommends, that was me sat on my sofa. I recorded all three of those just back to back. I was like, I need a jingle. And I was that like, was... things that we watched to play to recommend to you. And I was like, that'll do. And then I just harmonized it. So I just like, yeah, I just stuck two together. It's so great. Yeah, I, I, I like making little, like I'm a musician as well. Like I play guitar, I played in bands for a long, long time. And I just like making jingles. I like making little beats and synth things. So that was what sort of inspired those. Uh, and we want to redo them, don't we, Jordan? We need to do yeah. some new ones. Yeah, because we need to do one for Guac, which we haven't got yet. Oh, Guac. Good old Guac. Yeah. Oh, I love trying to guess those. Some of those absolutely stumped me. I was going to prepare one yeah. for you guys for this episode. Oh, oh. damn. <laughs> but I didn't want to steal your thing. No, I've got a bad track record all. of failing other people's games. Yeah, he does. <laughs> yeah. Shocking at it. As I'm you know. grateful you didn't. Thank you. <laughs> but your whole brand, it just, it really works. Like your graphics and, and everything that you do, just you immediately get a sense of the tone that you're going to experience when someone listens to or watches you guys. Dylan, I know you had a question about sort of their, their podcast Twitch combo and, and how that works. And they actually fuel the other. I, th I think that's really fascinating from the gaming side. Yeah, I yeah. think so. Because you guys have this whole added dynamic of Twitch and, and there's probably a good chunk of our listeners that don't know what that is. So you can even describe a little bit of that. But you have, those do kind of fuel each other, which, which is interesting because even if I don't get a chance to jump on Twitch and, and watch you guys, if you're talking about it or I'm um, We're going to go play this. It's, it's still energizing and fun and it's another way to interact. Um, and so talk about that in, in as short or as long in any way that you want. Okay. Well, Twitch is something that I picked up. When did I, when did we start doing Twitch? John? So I, I started playing Twitch on my own, didn't I, for a while. Um, yeah. So I just sort of play the games that I'm picking up recently. I do connect with other podcasts as well. So like Shark Select, they're part of uh, our Call of Duty squad. So we often go on online games Pixie. and play with them. Pixie Podcast as well. There was a huge big argument between Shark Select and Pixie Podcast because they, they were doing one-on-ones to see who would be the better player, basically. So I did a commentating match. So I was the referee for the match. So I streamed them both to my screen, captured everything and streamed it out as well. Uh, that was really, really good fun. So it gives a bit more of a live thing to people. So you can literally sit by and like us now having a conversation, it's almost like a live aspect to the podcast. And with what we just started doing as of last week with Carlos, we've started streaming the podcast out live as well. It makes it, it's got quite a different feeling, doesn't it, Jordan? Don't you think? Yeah, it's weird knowing that whatever you say is already done. Yeah, I it's can't like, bleep it out. <laughs> yeah, like... I've said some really dumb shit in the past where I'm really happy yep. that we edit stuff in post because uh, you've said some bad stuff as well. Matt, has we cannot keep that in. Oh, <laughs> like, I know. We yeah, genuinely can't. And sometimes I'll leave the bit in where Jordan goes, "You can't say that in the episode," and I'm like, "Yeah, I know." <laughs> but I've bleeped out what I've said before, so it's just lost the history. And it's nothing like we're never um, like it's nothing really offensive it's not political anything like that it's just like some of our jokes can be quite crass and yeah. even though we don't believe in censorship in our podcast like that's why i checked with you guys if i could swear or not after swearing <laughs> because <laughs> we're not used to doing that um we like to keep it at least somewhat watershed if we can um because some people don't like the crass sense of humor but yeah that's the one comment we've got on one of the on like podbean oh, the latest yeah. thing of like we did an episode, I think it was my spooky, where we did a creepy pasta of yeah, Fallout, yeah. Fallout 3. Uh, and I dropped the F bomb a lot in that episode, but I swear quite a lot. It's just kind of what I do. Yeah, I don't know it's why. It's conversational seasoning. It's like the salt <laughs> and pepper. It. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. That's what you got to do. But someone was like, wow, that, that is way too much. And it's yeah, like, they were like, too much yeah. fuck this, fuck that, weren't they? That's what they yeah. said. Yeah. Well, it, it is what it is. I guess, like, you just got to kind of do what you enjoy. But yeah, sometimes exactly. we definitely yeah. do need to be like, right, let's just take it back. <laughs> yeah, just step back a, a sec. Yeah. yeah. No, but I, I think it's good, especially with podcasting. And that actually goes hand in hand with Twitch, actually. Like a lot of people, they're watching Twitch, sometimes for the game. Like sometimes you might say, okay, I really like The Legend of Zelda. So I'm going to watch this stream and play Zelda because it's a memory that I can sort of touch back on from being a kid. 
But a lot of the time, if you're watching a stream for the, the streamer themselves, you're watching for the overall character to watch them experience something that maybe you already know about. So I don't think censoring yourself too much works when you're trying to be the host of something. You're yeah. trying to be you. Yeah, you're, and you're you being you. you don't want to you. stop being you. Exactly. So don't, my advice to someone if you're starting a podcast or Twitch is be yourself. Don't limit yourself and don't, don't worry of expressing things that you like, especially things that you're passionate about, like games. Like that's one of the reasons we started because we're passionate about games and films and weird shit that happens in the world that we're doing our spookies because it makes us go, ah, oh, fuck that. And then people go, he says fuck too much. <laughs> you know, yeah, it's yeah. Like, <laughs> you just got to be true to yourself. That's what I'm getting at there, yeah. I think. Yeah. I think people yeah. like the authenticity and, and, and I think that comes through for the people that are really good at what they do, like you guys, and, and we aspire to be. We hope that that authenticity comes through and, and people like us for who we are. I think I also fairly regularly mentioned, but probably don't need to across the podcast, like I almost want to give people permission. You don't have to listen to every single one of our episodes because mm -hmm. we know some people might try to do that and some people already won't. Um, but it's like jump into the ones you think that are interesting and it's okay to hop out and come back next week. Um, cause yeah, there's a yeah. bit of episodic nature, you know, like a sitcom, if you miss an episode of Seinfeld, you can still jump into the next one and, and still enjoy it just as much. And, and I think you guys yeah. do really, really well. Um, Thank you. Yeah. And I think you started nailing it. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah. But I think, I think <laughs> there's it's, too. Go ahead. It's, a, it's a bit of a double-edged sword too, right? Because like sometimes we've often loved that Kendall keeps Dylan and I from going down this really weird, obscure brotherly <clears throat> tangent. Yeah. But then sometimes the thing you're not saying would actually get you a lot of like the nerdier and geeky you get sometimes might get more fans because you just own oh, yeah. your weirdness. Yeah. So whether it's LARPing or being a furry on the weekends, like <laughs> for some they're going, wait, what? And for others they're going, oh, I'm definitely in. Right. Yeah. Cause some people don't know yeah. what that is. Like we want to experiment. This is weird. We want yeah, to experiment with furry stuff. Don't worry, John. He's a big furry man. He's got his beard. <laughs> I am more hair than man. Yes, um, he is. Yeah, it, we make a big point with ourselves saying that we don't at any point make jokes at people's expense. Like, we'll make jokes. Yeah. But especially when it comes down to, like, the furry thing, is that I find that so interesting because it's something I have Same. literally no idea about. I'd love to have a furry on to talk about it. Like, is it all sexual? Is it so why do you... What is it about it that you like? Because yeah, I have yeah. no frame of reference for this. Nope. But it's all well and good watching like documentaries, things like that, because I think there's like a few. But being able to speak individually to someone who might have a different viewpoint than that documentary would be, yeah, I yeah. think, yeah. I use it as a learning platform. We yep. speak to so many different people. It's great to take in as much information as you can. It's from somebody who knows nothing about it, right? Like mm -hmm. that's what's yeah. great about Joe Rogan is he can have anybody on. And because he's almost saying, dumb this down for me, you're listening through those ears, right? And so you yeah, go, yeah. oh, he's taking on the position of someone who's admittedly ignorant to that thing or that area of science or physics or whatever. Uh, he's not trying to impress anyone or hold court, right? He's just listening. And so something like that, where this is such a niche, unique part of society, we would be going, hey, tell us all about it, right? Because yeah, we have yeah. no point of reference. And then the listener then feels that too. Yeah, completely. And it's good to be open to learning any kind of information like that. And that's what makes for a really good podcast is if you can, like you said with Joe Rogan, put the information across where anyone, like the layman can understand it completely, even if they come in completely like bereft of information beforehand. Mm -hmm. And also, thank you for saying niche correctly. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. Yes, because me and Jordan have heard people say, what is it, is it niche? Niche. Yes. Yeah, it's like, it's got an E on the end. It's niche. <laughs> but yes. <laughs> Thank you so for that. But yeah, just <laughs> learn anything you can from podcasts and, and be open to learning new things and having guests on. Like, like that's what we were getting at with the furry thing. We, we actually, we were just mentioning this on the episode we just recorded because yeah. the Sonic fandom, for people who don't know like about Sonic the Hedgehog, he's got a massive thirsty furry co communion almost online. And <laughs> it's something that's really interesting. Like how does this start? And like from yeah. the 90s, we've spoke to a lot of artists, haven't we, Jordan? We've had like a couple of artists on yeah a lot of them draw like personified animals and it seems to be a big thing and is it because of space jam and lola bunny and that's what we're trying to get to the bottom of yeah 
<laughs> no, I spent I spent a lot of time. I'm you know you guys know I'm an artist and illustrator. I spent a lot of time on DeviantArt, and oh, it lives yeah. up to its name very oh. often. <laughs> yeah, um, but it does. <laughs> <laughs> but but there's these whole subcultures and and if we were to ask those people tell us about your fascination with that art or that lifestyle my guess mm -hmm. is that nine times out of ten it would come down to community because yeah. i'm yeah. just allowed to be me and there's a community of people that are just as weird as i am and it's cool and that's it's yeah. probably no deeper than that like community i found a place to belong with all yeah. of my weirdness and i don't feel like i have to hide it so um, that's what everyone wants isn't it the, yeah. you know just like yeah. acceptance and that's great if people can find that i'm really happy for them yeah, yeah. same like to be ex and that's like with again with like the podcast communities on twitter and stuff you find people who like the weird shit that you're also into like whether it's games like we do like we talked to a load of gaming podcasts just to, literally about games and like carlos said last week when he went into working with games he found that it was an amazing thing because he was no longer the outcast in his office yeah. who liked games and yeah. now he was like, oh, everyone, you can talk to literally anyone about anything. Did you see this trailer for Ghost of Tsushima this week? And everyone's yeah. like, hell yes, I did. I've completed it right now. I just yeah. played through the whole thing. I'm sweaty and gross and I've drank 20 cans of Monster. You know, like that kind yeah. of thing. <laughs> yeah. I love when he said that. I was actually playing Warzone and listening to that episode. I'm terrible at Warzone, by the way. But anyway, so like he said, he, he knew that when he got into the field of gaming, he could be sat next to anybody and have a base level of understanding about game history, game culture, and yeah. just he knew that that was automatically a part of it. I went to art school where there weren't engineers and there weren't people who were there studying something else. We were all artists studying some different type of art and it was just so cool because literally everyone you bumped into was as passionate about art and illustration and design as you were. And that was such a fun thing. At times it was a little bit boring because that's all we ever talk about. Yeah. <laughs> um, but but yeah, I absolutely related to to when he said that. Sweet. Yeah. I, think that, I cut you off earlier. Were you going to say something? Uh, who? I'm lost. Kendall, <laughs> did I cut you off earlier? No, no. Actually, you you, you asked what I was going to ask again. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Stealing um, script from out his mouth. <laughs> no. I, so uh, just in this vein, and I, I've talked about this before. One of the things that I love about podcasts and, and my wife, especially who uh, she was into podcasts long before I was um, <clears throat> is. Uh, it, it, and so what, what she does and what I've learned is I am, I am fascinated to hear about, about anything as, as long as, as long as the, the person talking about it is, is passionate yes. about it. And that's, that's the thing. Like I can get, um, you know, I, I haven't, I haven't been in the gaming world, um, you know, since I was 20 and, uh, uh, you know, I spend my time doing responsible things <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, but, but even, even at that, and I say that in jest, like I could, I could easily part, part of that for me is like, I could, I could easily spend all of my time in games cause that's what I used to do. Mm -hmm. Um, and so, so there's, there's a part of me that's just like fighting the temptation and just knows that that would be bad for me. Um, but, uh, <laughs> limit your time, man. You got to do what I do. Get up at five and play, play it till like seven till you've got to have duties. Yeah. Yeah. Um, no, I just, I wouldn't sleep is the problem. Yeah. <laughs> I would not go to bed, but, uh, no, it, it's, it's like, but, but listening to, to Corey and Dylan talk about games when, when uh when that comes up i'm i'm happy to to sit and listen and and listening to you two um talk on a gaming podcast is is fun for me uh because of who you guys are now your podcast has that other element of like we're just going to be like goofy and funny <laughs> as well so like you, you could like literally not even be interested in learning anything about games whatsoever and you could still pull up grief burrito and just listen to you guys banter um <laughs> which which i think is incredible and like mm -hmm. the, the way you two talk to each other is is uh is something that that i feel like a lot of people can aspire to and and i think it doesn't go unnoticed i think a lot of people when they hear your podcast they have that exact same question that that i had which which was you guys are scripting this somehow or you're <laughs> you're you're practicing aren't you you guys are way or, too kind this I is know. like i don't oh, oh my god thank you so much i've never like Kurt's blushing this is great he is, literally. 
You can't tell beneath the beard, but I am. Yeah, I am. <laughs> <laughs> the reality is I think you guys are probably just really good at it and I've gotten better. So the art of conversation and talking to, to anybody is, is something that, that you can learn and do better over time. And then when you have a podcast and you're talking to the same person, um, yeah, uh, week yeah. in and week out, I, I think it, it, the, those conversations can tighten up more and more. Yeah, completely. I mean, that's the nicest thing anyone has ever said about our podcast. So thank you so thank much. Thank you so much. Like, mm -hmm. We've been doing this like a long time. Not, well, it's not even that long. It feels like a long time. It feels like we've never really not done it. Uh, yeah. And it does we take... hang out more as well, didn't we? When, yeah, obviously, yeah. when everything was open, if we'd record a session, we'd then just hang out for like another few hours. Yeah, and, or, eat pizza and watch a movie. Like, what did we do? We recorded the How to Make a Tea video. That oh, took yeah. us so long. It yeah, took a ridiculous it amount of time, but it was just funny because it was like, it's nice hanging out with Haz. There's like no expectation about it. Oh, yeah. it's so kind. Oh. I've got to be nice as well, apparently. Yeah, um, but yeah it's, it's just like, because it's nice hanging out, you don't feel like there's any kind of pressure with it. And then that transfers over to the podcast. There's no pressure between us. It's just no. what we're talking about. Yeah, it's, it, it, it pays to be natural. And I think you do learn the, the art of conversation. And I think I learned it from running a bar. I think that was where it started for me. Like okay. I used to run a pub. I, I had never worked in a pub before and they put me on a Sunday lunch shift on my own. And if you don't know what Sunday lunch is in England, it's like big roast dinners, like roast chickens and everything. And they were like, there oh, you wow. go, serve everyone. And I was like, oh God. <laughs> and from then you just, you learn to banter with people really quick because then they get drunk. And then that just helps be, I think working in a service industry for a year for absolutely everyone would help a hell of a lot of the population learning how mm. to deal with people in, Amen. Just, in every yeah. aspect. Yeah. Completely. Yeah. Um, and on top of not even just learning how to deal with people, uh, but a little humility and kindness goes a exactly. long way. Yeah. yeah. yeah it, it it's does. a huge aspect of that that I think is missing. Um, that's, yeah. That's spot on. Well, yeah, you guys too. Yeah. I mean, in Jordan, I think you touched on it. You said has is just fun to hang out with. I find that the people whose books I read, whose, whose YouTube channels I watch are just the gregarious, affable people who like, I just wish I could hang out with them. I just would love to have a coffee with them and, and have a drink with them. <clears throat> and that's, that's who I'm drawn to. It's like, mm -hmm. I'll, I'll consume their content all day long because they emit that sort of thing. I'm all yeah. about Adam Savage from Mythbusters right now. Oh, and yeah. He's yeah. Just finished yeah, his book, he's great. Every, every Tool's a Hammer. Mm -hmm. And he's like, a little bit OCD, a little bit crazy, but also like a genius and loves making things. And I'm like, that's just who I would hang out with naturally. And so I'm just addicted to tested.com and his book. And uh, Mike Rowell is a lot that way. The, the host of Dirty Jobs, who has his own podcast as well. Um, yeah. So anyway, I think you guys have that too. You, you guys, you can tell that you have fun doing what you're doing and you are people that you know, the next time I'm in the UK, whenever the world opens up again, that I would <laughs> in a non-stalker way track you down and say, let's go have a Guinness. Uh, oh yeah, man, definitely. For Guinness. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> well, definitely. I feel like there's a, a bit of a, it's kind of weird, isn't it? If you try and connect with people, you don't want to come across as a stalker. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Is that, yeah. I'm not saying you do much. <laughs> no, I'm not saying. <laughs> Core is creepy. You can say it. It's No, it's fine. <laughs> But yeah, it's difficult not wanting to come across as creep or anything like that. But I'm sure with me and Haz, it's very much like if someone did want to message us like on um, on Twitter or through any other social media means, we'd be mm. more than happy to speak to people. Yeah, and definitely. It's like, we'd love to speak because you hear about all these like famous people who are kind of dicks secretly. Yeah, and secret dicks. Secret dicks. Nothing secret worse dicks. than secret Those dicks. Those are the worst kind. It's... Whenever the, you think there's nothing there and there's a dick there. It's happened a lot yes. of times. Open a box of donuts. <laughs> Dick. Shit. That's not what I want. <laughs> he says moving his hand towards his mouth to try and eat something. I'm eating <laughs> blueberries. <laughs> but yeah, it's like we, we love talking to people. It's really nice. Like coming on here, it's amazing. Because obviously I've, yeah. I've started listening to you guys. And it's fucking such a great podcast. It's so good. So All when this... we get to come on and be like, yeah, we can talk about anything. It's amazing. This is a love, love fest. It. It's just going back and forth. That's right. I did feel a little stalkerish the other day when I was watching Has play Warzone, and uh, <laughs> voyeurism. I was like, "Hey, hey, hey! It's me, Corey. Hey. <laughs> Corey from, from the middle." And then the the one thing I would say that I love about both the podcast and Twitch, I love the absolute hard pivots or, or bits of ran randomness. So he's playing, 
he's playing Warzone, and all of a sudden it's kind of quiet and he just goes my face was coughed on by a man today <laughs> <laughs> it was it was disgusting uh. and then he reenacted oh. it and i'm just like i see i love this i can watch this, all day. this is gold oh, that's amazing <laughs> it was the grimmest cough there ever was it was real nasty <laughs> That it was, that there ever will be. Yeah. Oh, that's Flemmy well. Oh. And we're back for the second half of our conversation with uh, Harrison Wilde and Jordan Shenton from Grease, Grief Burrito, not Grease, because that's burrito. a very different podcast. <laughs> um, Grief Burrito. It's been such a wonderful conversation already, and I'm, I'm glad that you guys uh, stuck around for, for just a little more, because we do have a few more questions for you guys. Sweet. Can't wait. Um. You talk all things gaming, or for the most part, all things gaming, and we're three dads with a lot of past experience, but as I said, kids get in the way. So mm -hmm. we're out of the loop on uh, a lot of, of gaming trends and gaming culture. So catch us up. What are some big trends or things that we need to know about or, or people like us who are in their middle chapters of life with a lot of other things? What If they were going to play just a few games or get caught up on a few games, what would those be? And catch up on the latest thing right here you might not have heard of this but it's called the xbox <laughs> <laughs> and we're out all right this has been great. <laughs> uh, i got that from a charity shop yesterday for a fiver it's one of the original xbox controls yeah Didn't have says. one look how big it is it's yeah. fucking huge oh man wow see that was that was my day just yeah. to give you an idea like so Halo, like it was was big into Halo, and uh, and and capture the flag, and mm -hmm. like there was a group of us friends who had formed a a capture the flag team, and we had ideas of of competition and 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 things of that nature. We practiced, uh, nice. and all kinds of things, and then and then Halo Two comes out, and ever and, and it was over, uh, <laughs> <laughs> and then uh, but then I I remember so I had. Uh, <clears throat> I'd spent two years at, uh, at college and, and then finished at a different college. But there was a weekend that I went to visit some friends at that first college and Halo three had just come out and, uh, I hadn't, I hadn't yet played it and they had it there right. at their apartment and they asked me if I wanted to play. I'm like, Oh well, yeah. And, oh, yes. uh, <laughs> I, I sat down and, um, and played, uh, played the the campaign uh and it was probably 10 o'clock at night i i literally did not sleep and wow. finished it by morning <laughs> and, that's insane wow. right <laughs> so it's, that's it's, it's that's why i don't play video 3. games anymore <laughs> really because of that, that hard addiction the demon on your back that's, yeah <laughs> oh man i had the shakes for a while and <laughs> <laughs> Speaking in tongues, yeah, detox and Cortana. Yeah, <laughs> it's when your team had ideas of grandeur. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's, it, I, I was going to say it's funny that you brought Halo Three. I literally completed it yesterday. Yeah, yeah. I, uh, oh, wow. I went back through and played it. Yeah, and it's made it has made me more excited for the new Halo because, like, saying what's coming next is obviously we've got the next generation of games coming, out, haven't we, Jordan? We've got the Series yeah. X and we've got the PlayStation Five. In like, is it three months now? Is that that's something like that, yeah. Not I mean, long. That's been up and to we date still don't know it. the price. We don't know how much they're going to cost because Xbox and Sony are like, whoever says it Waiting. first, they're going to go tenor underneath, and that's it. <laughs> um, and underneath, got... have it, have it in there by, uh, by the beginning of December, so all the parents buy them for their kids. And exactly, yeah. But we we actually had this conversation, didn't we, Jordan? I don't think if I if I couldn't afford a console by fifty quid or whatever it would be, I wouldn't buy the one I didn't want. Because I didn't, yeah. I couldn't afford. I just save up a little longer. Yeah, exactly. I just it's like you know what you want, don't you? Yeah, and that's a very, I suppose, a very capitalist way of thinking about it. Like I'll just save my money. But that, if you want something enough, you will save your money for it. And that's the end of the day. If I want to play the new franchise from Nintendo, like the new Zelda or you know the new fucking Mario game that I just got, I'll wait to buy that. I, I'm happy not playing the latest game when it comes out right away. And I think mm -hmm. Xbox especially are doing something nice. I don't know if you know the difference between what Xbox and PlayStation are doing. Uh, Xbox have said that any games that you buy on the Xbox One X, which is the latest Xbox console, will still be functional on the Series X and vice versa. So if you buy the new game with the version for the Xbox One X, 
you'll still be able to play it on the Series X when it comes out. That whereas, is amazing. Yeah, it's really cool. Whereas PlayStation are saying only the top whatever it is 50 games from the PS4 will be compatible on the new PS5. Whereas the Xbox Series X, the entire Xbox catalog back to the original Xbox, like that giant fucking Duke controller we just showed, mm-hmm. all of those games are still being able to be played on the new Xbox. You that's can go really all cool. the way back. And I think that's a much nicer way to do it, especially with, are you familiar? You might be familiar, Corey, with Game Pass. Yep. You, yeah. Yeah. So Game Pass, you pay a, like a Netflix subscription and you get like 100 games to play. Mm-hmm. We're I'm, not sponsored by Xbox. Just no, we're you know. not. I know. I know we're not. <laughs> I, I'm predominantly a, a, an sure Xbox gamer, yeah. and I just prefer that way to look at it. I right. think it's a, it's very almost like you're chopping people out of the market with play, the way PlayStation are doing it, in my opinion. I'm like, yeah. I, we've we've had the conversation as well, saying like, as nice as backwards compatibility is, yeah, I'm yeah. probably not going to play anything from the PS4 on the PS5 if it was an option. Yeah, like, yeah. because the reason I like PlayStation more at the minute is that I just prefer their exclusives and the control. But, right, we're not getting into this. Not again. Every time. <laughs> <laughs> every so, time. Every every time. So <laughs> we, uh, I just prefer the exclusives, and the majority of them are just kind of like single player experiences anyway. So it's not like yeah. something you go back to. I, yeah. It's kind of it's a nice to have, but I don't think it'd sway me enough to get the Xbox. I'm probably going to get the PlayStation just because I prefer those games. Mm-hmm. Well, that's just me. But in terms of stuff that should definitely be played, if you're on a, you've got limited time available, yeah. unlike myself, where all I can do is play games at the minute. Um, I'd say like Dark Souls One, definitely something I'd recommend. Oh yeah, uh, Spider Man for the PS4, really good. Mm-hmm. The Witcher, that's probably you've got to have a lot of time to invest i can't get into that i'm struggling so much man it's all right mate it's okay to be wrong it's all um, right mate it's okay <laughs> it's all right to be wrong there's nothing wrong with that i don't know what it is it's just so dour it's just like Geralt's always like blah, 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 blah. you know i don't know the w- even though i can play dark souls and i love it it's like in, in if the you game don't dark- fall in love with Geralt, something incredibly no, wrong. <laughs> I, don't, I don't think it's Geralt. I think what the problem is, I think that in, in Dark Souls, if people who don't, don't know that game, you're playing in a world that has completely fallen apart. And you're like, almost like the, you're not like the last savior. You're trying to restart the flame that will start the world off again. Yeah. And in The Witcher, you're living in the world while it falls apart. And I think that's my issue. I'm fine picking up the shit. I'm fine picking up the pieces, <laughs> cleaning up after all the demons and getting rid of them. But I don't have to be there while I'm knocking my house down. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, because that's already going on in the real world. <laughs> exactly, yeah. I don't want to watch my favorite pub burn down and someone coughing over the road or in my face. I just can't. I can't do it. <laughs> yeah, I, I feel like such a lemming, right? Because I'm, I, I'm a member of the, the dad gaming group on Facebook. And cool. anything people are kind of talking about on there, that's just what I start playing. <laughs> yeah. Um, so people are talking about Animal Crossing. I'm like, that seems like a good coronavirus game. Um, and I'll people are talking about The Witcher or whatever. Everybody's talking about Fall Guys right now. So I'm like, I'll get Fall Guys because that looks like a silly good time. It is pretty fun. It is <laughs> really, yeah. It's pretty fun. I've not played that yet. It's, it's all right. So, it's just nice dumb fun you don't have to think about anything you're just like right i just need to get out of here i just need yeah, to leave it's escapism that's all it is at the moment <laughs> yeah so there is goo coming oh are there any trends that you guys just like don't can't get behind don't understand don't like fortnite fortnite <laughs> fortnite make some time to prepare and answer yeah, if you like. yeah. I, I don't know what it is like i first I, of all the, the structural engineering is yeah. way off. Yeah, it is, yeah. <laughs> they haven't got permits for that building. They haven't got permits. Oh. He so that's why he's not a fan of Mario either. He's that they're not licensed. They're not licensed. They don't show up on, they're not on checker trade. He would still oh, get no, pulled over. Right. Yeah. He's not gas safe, is he? He's not he's not got a certificate. <laughs> There's not a snorkel on that car. There's no way that it's oh. operating underwater. No, exactly. Okay, yeah. so Harrison's gonna think about it. Jordan, do you have anything? I think it is the entire Battle Royale thing. So I, I played a fair bit of PUBG when it came out, and I wasn't very good at it, fair. Um, but I tried to play a little bit of Fortnite as well, but I just can't dedicate the amount of time to it. Like, um, almost like MOBAs. Like, I used to play a fair bit of Dota, but it was like, at the point where it's, if you are matched with a team that just, you're in certain situations, like, if I start this game and this 
person I'm playing with goes to the wrong lane, that's just 45 minutes of my day gone and we're going to lose regardless. It's like, I just can't dedicate that time despite having nothing else to do. Like, I could be doing something else yeah. equally as miserable. Um, I would rather be doing nothing right now. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> That's how I feel. Because I'm not good, I rely on camping a lot, which I know is like the bane of people's existence. But you could camp for 30 minutes and then just take the wrong lane or get shot and you're just like, well, there's 38 minutes of my life yeah. gone. Yeah. yeah, and Warzone's hard like that because the, the matches are long. The matches are very long. 150 people, and it's, yeah, they're very long matches. Yeah. yeah. But it's hard it's, in solos. You almost need, you need to squad up. You do, oh, yeah. yeah. It's, the, the level of stress in that game rises like exponentially. It's like compound interest. It's like, it starts like, oh yeah, actually no, it's like a, that little blip where you're jumping down at, right at the start and you haven't got a gun and you're like, fuck, give me anything that I can hit this man with. I'll get him with a bin. I don't care. I need something. And <laughs> then it's trash for, can, for, folks. Trash it, can. Yeah, Dude. trash can. Sorry, guys. <laughs> <laughs> um, you've got like this chilled bit for ages where nothing really happens. And then it, you see the squad counter counting down for as people are dying and that little circle's getting smaller. And suddenly the stress just like, it goes, and then you're all pushed into like a 10 meter radius and there's 25 people left. Yeah. And like the other day, me and Stu, you might've seen, were screaming. We were yeah. shouting. Stu was shouting about eating a tasty dish because he was on the menu. I don't, <laughs> <laughs> it's going to be a new thing. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Is actually 15 years old. It's just that stressful. <laughs> yeah, he looks like a 29 year old. Yeah, it's been really hard. Yeah. I was playing the other day, and because my brother Dylan used to work at Bose, I have a very nice home theater system. Oh, and nice. my family is rarely gone where I get to play with it turned up as loudly as I would like. So I have it on like 75% on this home theater system. And I'm running to the stadium on the highway, about to go into the bridge. When I start taking on fire, I jumped out of my chair like it was real live rounds and I panicked and almost messed myself. But it's just you're right. Like the stress level of this game is intense. And the, the sound effects are so believable. Like just the rounds hitting the gravel and then the gravel hitting, like hitting the ground. You hear those little sounds. It's, oh man. Yeah. It's pretty done immersive. Very well with it. I think, did they win an award, Jordan, for the sound design? I think. I'm sure I'm they did. For that sure. One. I know. Like the campaign alone, like um, have you guys played the campaign for Modern Warfare? No. Well, I'd say that entire campaign deserves awards for just really? how amazing it. Like, it seems like it would be like a generic -y COD title, like some of the other ones have been. But like the sound design, like the, there's a bit where there's um like a terrorist attack in Piccadilly, in London, like the oh, center right. of London, and it's just like. I remember the first time I played it because I was playing it in like 4K and with like nice uh, speakers and stuff like that. And I was like, this is actually insane. I was like, this <laughs> could almost be like real life, like how well everything's doing. Like even down to the animations, like people on the ground hurt. Other people will run up and like help them and mm, stuff like that. Away. It's like the sound design, the, the graphics, if you have it up on high and like, it's just amazing. I don't think that's very realistic though because people in London, if you fell over, they just ignore you. <laughs> No, yeah, you're right, actually. Okay, you're That's in my way. The, you can tell Americans designed it. They think yeah, we're all yeah. nice. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that is true. That is true. We also, by the way, it, you're probably aware of this. When, whenever, whenever we hear um, a British accent mm -hmm. in America, whoever, we're, the source of that accent, we automatically apply a certain amount of IQ points. Really? Oh, wow. Person. Anything that you say sounds better and smarter, and we will take your word for it just because it sounded like, like uh, even from Northern yeah. Monkeys. Like people yes. call us Northern <laughs> Monkeys from the down yeah. south. Doesn't matter. Really? It oh, doesn't. Yeah. We don't. Yeah, I didn't even know that. I didn't even know that, and I don't care. My yeah. IQ's in the minuses. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> so when you guys, when you guys recommended our podcast earlier, and we're mm -hmm. saying good things, that that does fantastic things for us good, because well, it's good. it's not said like this it's said like this it's like this with a bow tie and a sh <laughs> exactly yeah. Yeah. yeah and you're drinking tea for cripe's sake so there you go <laughs> yeah i was i'm actually um, allowed but so before we pivot before Ow. we pivot away from uh you guys' show and video games um you get a lot of great guests um you guys were talking about carlos the other day i listened to that episode mm. i'm in the middle middle of the one with ben hickling right now 
Um, oh, Ben was great as well. Yeah, yeah really ben. good. Do you guys get a lot of uh, concept artists on? Um, is that something that you... We've had comic artists on, haven't we, Jordan? We've had, yeah, so we had Laura J, um, mm -hmm. who I used to work with. She does just like comic art. We had Jessica on paper, who is, she's more of a portrait artist, wasn't she? But she, she her made her own French. comic. It was <laughs> Jessica on papier. On papier. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> ah, Franche. Oh, um, so, yeah, we've had a few. I know my, another friend of mine, he's also a concept artist. So, you know, Jake, don't you? Harrison? Oh, Jake Hat. Yeah, he's yeah, great. So he's he's real good. amazing. Yeah, we, yeah so, it's just people we know somehow. <laughs> So yeah, let me we, know if you guys want some more concept artists in gaming, because I went to school with a handful of them that are now at EA or LucasArts. Definitely, um, yeah. And, uh, oh, yes. As them. well yeah. as, so this is interesting. There's another Corey Hubble, spells it the same way, first and last name, which is a unique Whoa. spelling already. But yeah. he did the concept art or much of the concept art for Halo 5. And he's now oh, at wow. Amazon Game Studios. So he mm -hmm. and I have already talked to each other once because I'm like, wouldn't it be great if we did a coffee table book? Because my art is very different from his. So you could flip through right. it one way and then turn it upside down and flip back through it the other way. And it would be the art of Corey's Hubble. Uh, <laughs> That's so good. <laughs> That's actually an amazing idea. Because I have this oh. very sort of like thick outline, cartoony sort of kid friendly style. And he's obviously a digital painter. And so, um, but anyway, let me know if you guys want some concept can, artists. I I've, I've got it. an idea. You, you need like uh, my brain just like sparked up for the middle page where the two arts meet. Can you have both of you drawing the Hubble telescope like you know like meeting together like <laughs> yeah. across in the middle and then the pages yeah. flip over and you go out the other way or that like a so cool. you know Marvel Capcom splash page where the our yeah, creations yeah, yeah, are fighting each other or something yes that's well good yeah but yeah sure we're definitely happy to talk to him all right definitely. Cool. can I pre-order this when's this coming out <laughs> yeah, <okay. laughs> I'll send some people your way because I know a lot of concept artists in gaming and I know that yeah, they definitely. would love the exposure and to chat with you guys so yeah, That'd brilliant. Be amazing. Definitely Thank up you for that. Yeah. Co host anything? Because I could keep rolling with these guys all day. I've got like five more. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, like, we, we cover a lot of the things we're into all the time movies, video games, music, TV mm -hmm. shows, whatever. What do you guys do? So, not sleeping, if you're not working, if you're not podcasting, you're not playing games, at least very little time. But what do you <laughs> like does. to do if you're not doing those things? Do you want to go first, Jamin? Uh, yeah, sure. I um, I took up guitar recently, so nice. I've been. Yeah. So I uh, I ended up buying Rocksmith. So it technically counts as a game, but kind. It's more like a learning tool. Yeah. So I think over the first five days, I played thirty-five hours or something like that. He had blisters is, on his fingers. Yeah, I say, I had I a finger blisters on me fingers. Yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> it goes they're away. all right now. Yeah, the the it's pretty good. Other than that, I've been going on walks a lot recently. Mm -hmm. Uh. Mm -hmm. Anything else? Cooking, yeah. cleaning. I got a new car and fixed up a car. How do you make your mashed potatoes? Do you leave the skins on? I knew this question was coming. Yeah. Um, we have to talk I about peel them. Potatoes. I do peel them. Okay. Yeah, That's fine. That's fine. There's nothing wrong with that. I have them yeah. smooth. I'm sorry. A, a regular no potato, I, I, would, I would peel as well. A red potato, I would not peel. <laughs> I have I, never, no ever, ones. ever heard of skin on mashed potato. Mm. Ever and I've been out in America loads. Never knew that First was the time I heard it was The Simpsons. Really? And oh right. It's when what hap what episode is it? It's where that they like taken a a girl who is planning on killing Marge and then she can't pick <laughs> out a shovel, and Homer just like falls in love with her because of the skin on mashed potatoes. Yeah. <laughs> that's such oh, a good that suddenly I rings bells from childhood. I just came uh, screaming I love back. We, I love that we touched on The Simpsons as well. This is a wonderful yeah. catch-all of <laughs> culture. It is. We've had furries, gaming, <laughs> The Simpsons, mashed potato. This is great. So, so mashed potatoes are, yeah, they're, they're, they're beautiful. They are. One of the <laughs> greatest great. food ever. I, Mix some I cheese don't... in there. <sighs> cheese, peas, I, just butter. Yes. I don't, gravy. What I do not care like I, I don't discriminate i've i have never once tasted mashed potatoes and thought Ugh. no ever. never like, that has potatoes, never happened uh, potatoes are like one of the best things that there ever was like if you didn't have potatoes you wouldn't have chips fries you wouldn't have sweet potato like wedges you wouldn't have jacket potatoes mashed potato you wouldn't have vodka you wouldn't have crisp or chips as you guys call them right. there's so many things that you wouldn't have i stand <laughs> firmly by that they're one of the best things there are definitely that so, you, we even turned them into no I'm just passionate about prepared? potatoes, man. 
We even you turn know them what I'm into, like about food. We even turn them into ammunition here. We make potato guns out of PVC pipe. That's true. Oh, Sick. yeah. That's point. That sounds so good. <laughs> a lot of fun, actually. And yeah. it's really, now you're going to have to try to do a, a chunky potato with skin and try it. Just throw extra butter in there and salt. Yeah, I will do. Definitely I do. I'm not eating yet. I'll do it. Be, most restaurants aren't going to serve it that way, but that's very much a middle America home cooked meal kind of thing. Well, I, I've had some pretty upscale skin on mashed potatoes before. Okay. So it's, I think it's typically like a, it's very common for like the, the red potatoes or like the, the waxy potatoes, the small mm-hmm. ones. Yeah. Uh, it's common around here, especially for those to, all right. To I'll mash, tell you what, I'll tell those. you what. Yes. When me and Jordan come around America, like we're yes. going to, mm-hmm. We'll come see you. We'll have skin on mashed potatoes. We'll bring yeah. some English vodka from Herefordshire. Fantastic. Made some potatoes. Yes. And we'll have a big cook up. I'll bring some meats and stuff. It's going to be great. And we'll podcast it all. We'll live stream it. And yes. we'll make a grenade launcher <laughs> using potatoes as ammunition. Yes, please. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's the thing that's top on my list. I'll be fine. Blow up some small <laughs> boats. Awesome. Sounds like a party. Speaking <laughs> of you guys coming to Ohio, and, and I got a bit confused when I was scrolling through your back library the other day because you do these spooky episodes, right? And they have yeah. their own number, but that's still inside of the master episode number of every episode, right? It is, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, so to those that would be new to your podcast, because we're going to bring you guys at least two or three new listeners. Um, <laughs> <Thank you very laughs> much. It's on our reach. Um, but I love the spooky episodes. And are you guys familiar with the books, Scary Stories to Tell in the Dark? Yes, I've heard of them. I've never read them and I've not seen the film, yes, but it's I on have. my list. It's on my list. So, so those came out when I was in elementary school, grade school. Okay. And a f- significant amount of those stories take place in Ohio. So oh. my proposal is if you need an on-the-ground reporter to go to some of these locales, in the scary stories to ta- tell in the dark book, Dylan would love to do it. Yes, I'm in. <laughs> Dylan, yeah. let's do it. Yes. Um, but yeah, abandoned asylums and bridges where you can hear babies crying. And there's a whole bunch of uh, Ohio locales for these scary stories. So well, that sounds have- like that listener isn't going to like the episode because there's going to be a lot of fuck that in there. <laughs> <laughs> Well, we did uh, Ohio, you spooky bitch. Spooky bitch. Yeah. yeah, we yeah. did. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. Oh, yeah. We, the Black we Case Diaries. Yeah. yeah, I saw that title, but I hadn't listened to that one yet. But so probably, so probably a little bit redundant there. But yeah, I thought. You oh were- no, no. The Ohio sounds like there's enough spooky shit going on to have its own entire Definitely. podcast. Yeah, yeah, it does. Definitely. I mean, shout out to the Black Case Di- Diaries. They are some of the most awesome people as well. Absolutely love their show, and they came on for the episode to basically pitch their own spooky to us. So usually it'd be me and Jordan giving a spooky to each other. But this yeah. time we had three guests on pitching that whole state spooky environment to us. Those are my yeah. favorite spooky episodes because I have to do yeah. literally nothing but show no up. research. Yeah. <laughs> it's amazing. <laughs> that's great. We need to go back and listen to that. Yeah, that's a really good one. The, the spookies were a weird thing. It wasn't something that... I, I, I go back and forth with myself as to whether they actually fit in with grief burrito. Like I didn't know whether to break that off into its own thing or not. And I think that was why I numbered them like I did. Mm -hmm. So like episode, whatever it was, episode three is actually episode one of spooky burrito. And the one that came up most recently was episode 20 of spooky burrito, but it was episode 72 or something like that. Mm -hmm. Something weird. Yeah. Yeah. But it, it then means that if we want to break it out, yeah later down the line it still <laughs> says welcome to episode one of spooky burrito not welcome right. to episode 12 of grief burrito on the intro yeah right and it's just kind of worked together well it's like hindsight planning that i didn't yeah. initially plan this much well done <laughs> i don't know how to explain it really. hindsight planning i didn't hindsight plan for planning the hindsight <laughs> Harris right. Price it's said. basically time travel if you think about it <laughs> <laughs> So you guys have guested on a lot of podcasts, I'm sure. Hmm. What's one question that you wish people would ask you or a topic that you wish they would hit on? Oh, God. That is a very good question. There's so many things. You probably get the same old, explain the name and how did you guys get into podcasting? And some of we've already done, but right. What's the one that you're like, man, that would have been a great conversation. Uh, <laughs> I'll let you take this one half for the first thing. I've got to think of something. Mashed potatoes? <laughs> mashed potatoes, yeah. Um, Has anyone ever asked my... you about mashed potatoes before? No. 
Wait, it's definitely the most so interesting nice. question I've been asked. And I'm you know why? Man. While you're thinking, I'll tell you why. So I, we've talked about the uh, YouTube channel, First We Feast, and their series, Hot Ones, where they have celebrities oh, yeah. on who have the hot mm-hmm. wings, right? Mm-hmm. What I love so much about that is all the canned responses that they would normally get. How did you get into acting? How did you get into stand-up comedy? Yeah. And you're eating progressively, increasingly hotter wings, and all you can think about is the fact that your mouth is on fire. Yeah. They lose all their canned responses. And so you get a more authentic version of them because you're basically torturing them live. You so do. I think it's funny to sort of get beyond the questions that you always get asked and think about mm-hmm. some of those things that are like, huh. That's a really good point. I like it that. Is. Yeah. yeah. I mean, that, that's, it's called uh, disruption marketing, I think, mm. is the term that they, they use for that. And it works brilliantly on that show. It really does. Um, I'm trying to think of something that's really, really weird. Like, um, Jordan, what's the weirdest place you've thrown up? Mm. That is a that is a weird question. I, I've got a weird throat story. I think I'm not sure if I've told it already. <laughs> but it's okay. like I was out. Well, about my, to. <laughs> I was out for my 19th birthday. So so in England you can drink when you're 18. I'm not sure. I, that's pretty common knowledge, I think. Mm-hmm. But I was out for my 19th, and there were a bunch of people, and we ended up in this bar, and it's not there anymore. I don't think either. It's not my fault. Just throwing out. <laughs> Um, the sick was everywhere. It was, I, it I was so up. bad. Someone drew cat whiskers on everyone, which was weird. I don't remember. I still remember like only thirty percent of that night. I, apparently, I walked up to my friend, also called Jordan, and said, like, "I was like, Jordan, buy me a drink." And he was like, "No, so you're gonna throw up, and we don't want that." And I was like, "I've only thrown up like once tonight." <laughs> <laughs> and apparently yeah so probably that bathroom because it was just such a weird situation how about you house where's the weirdest place you've thrown up you've got to have a lead on to that uh when i was i went I, I traveled around america when i was 19 um so i wasn't legally able to drink and i went to lake geneva in where was it now in wisconsin and I went around in the daytime and I made friends with all the, the, the bar staff and security in the daytime having food. So when I went back at nighttime, they'd all be like, oh, Harrison, come in. So we did that. And we ended up doing shots of Everclear. Oh, wow. Oh, boy. What is Everclear? That's not uh, something you do. It's, it's drain cleaner. It's like the worst thing that possibly ever is. And I, uh, I had to leave. So I, I walked home as far as I could and I threw up down the back of a, I think it was a CBS or a Dunkin' Donuts. Uh, <laughs> and I, I walked back to my cousin's house and I remember getting in and like hitting the sofa and she came home from work from her lunch and was like, what is happening? And I'm like, I am so sick. <laughs> <laughs> she was like, how did you get served? And it's lunchtime. And then we went out afterwards. We went out <laughs> that night. <laughs> Oh, I threw up on my friend's leg, actually. That's the weirdest oh, no. place I've thrown up on. <laughs> <laughs> no, I... Like, the one thing you guys have got inside, I don't know how much you know about England's kind of culture. Um, yeah. We are famous in England and the United Kingdom for binge drinking. That's our yeah. thing. That's what we're... That's what yeah, we're yeah, good at. No yeah, one's yeah. good at that. It's not a pleasant thing. I don't even drink that much. <laughs> that's the thing. Not anymore. Yeah, but with Everclear, I mean, that yeah. stuff's like 94% alcohol. So, oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. It's that nasty stuff. Bad. It was bad times. Yeah. I've cleaned that bar wounds actually burned with, down afterwards. With things that are more dilute than Everclear. <laughs> <Really>? <laughs> have you guys ever been to the UK? So, I have twice. I was in Newcastle uh, once and uh, London, uh, two separate trips for work. Oh, right. And, okay. then, um, and then spent some time in Ireland recently uh, and was my first time there. We have heritage from there. Everybody has family from there. Yeah, especially <laughs> on uh, St. Patrick's Day. Yeah, but, but <laughs> exactly. <laughs> loved, loved each experience. Newcastle was beautiful. Um, London was great. I did the double-decker bus tour thing where you see oh, as much as you can in one shot, you know, the big red bus. Yeah, yeah. And, yeah. Um, because I have a friend from Australia and he's like, you're not, you're not going to be able to see everything you want to see. Just do the bus tour for the next time that you come back. So just do the oh, bus okay. tour so that you at least get to say that you saw it. And then you sort of make a mental note. Okay. The crown jewels, that seems like something I want to do or, mm-hmm. 
the Harry Potter walking tour or whatever you want to do, right? So that's really good, actually. Yeah, uh, I, I went. Good, I yeah. I don't really like Harry Potter that much, but that tour was awesome. Yeah, yeah so I actually going, did actually, it, yeah. and they 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 will set you up in the exact shots from the film, so you can stand there. <laughs> Piccadilly Circus or by the by the booth that's outside of the Ministry of Magic which is just in a little alley somewhere and just stand by each of those places so yeah it was so pretty good. cool what about you what's the weirdest thing I'm trying to think of like the question that you asked us then like that retaliation about being sick was a weird question I don't know why I thought of <laughs> I that I like it no. just, uh, just, something that you wish, just something that you wish people would bring up when you're the guest like when, or know, when your I, show is the guest I'm trying to think of one for you though like I want to know stuff about you guys like <laughs> I'm big into like, obviously we're, like, we're into like the paranormal stuff. So I want to know what the hell's going on with like aliens and ghosts and stuff like that. Even if I'm a skeptic, which I definitely am, I still think there's weird stuff. So like, I want to know you guys, have you guys ever seen a, a spacecraft? Have you ever seen the Bigfoot or both of his feet? I don't, I don't know. You know what I mean? <laughs> I'm, I'm a big Tom DeLonge fan. So, oh, right. So there's okay. that. Yeah. Um, I'm actually, I'm actually kind of pissed off at him because... Like I, I liked every bit of music that guy made mm. and, and then it all ended because he's delusional in my, yeah. in my humble opinion. But I still, but what's funny Me is I, I still, I still follow, I still follow his, uh, his stuff. So when it, whenever I see him on any kind of media, um, I want to watch Tom DeLonge talk about aliens because it yeah. entertains me. There's um, something fascinating about people that are that like uh, enamored with something that they will confirm every like they go into confirmation bias everything yeah. points to whatever they want it to believe yeah exactly and uh, maybe that's maybe that's like a maybe that's like a sick part of 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 me that like i, I like to hear people talk about something that they're passionate about mm -hmm. even even if that thing doesn't make any sense i still yeah, have to yeah. watch <laughs> time to launch talk about talk about aliens and makeup stories <laughs> but um <laughs> Uh, I, I, you know, I, I like it. I, I like, I like paranormal stuff. I like, I like scary movies and, um, I like to hear, uh, so I, I started listening to, uh, 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 the podcast has been around for a knife, knife point. I don't remember. It's a, it's a mm -hmm. horror podcast that I, I'm mm -hmm. like two episodes into it now, but I'm starting to get into it. Um, I, I do enjoy those kinds of things. I'm not a believer in any of it. Um, but, um, it but make I it still any less interesting. Doesn't make it yeah. any less interesting. There's a, I've, I've read some stuff about psychology about scare movies and how it also applies to, to like eating spicy food that like, there's this weird thing that happens in the brain that like when, when you're eating something spicy that like you have these receptors that are literally telling your brain that like my mouth is on fire and you need to take care of this. Yeah. But then you have like the other part of your brain that's like, well, you know that your mouth is not on fire. Right. And, <laughs> and so there's just this cognitive dissonance <laughs> within your own head. And, uh, and, and it, it can create this chemical thing that a lot of people like that enjoy. And so it's not like a, it's not like a, you're, it's not like a risk taking thing. It's not a chances taking thing. It's, it's like a, there's this thing that doesn't make sense and, and you like that feeling. And so That's... when you're watching a scary movie um, or you're telling each other spooky stories or that kind of thing, I feel like the same thing happens that like, like it, since I, I don't believe in such things mm -hmm. um, that like, even though like for me, I know it's not true. Like that doesn't, but there's still another part of me that's getting spooked out by it. And, and the yeah. fact that like parts of my brain are in disagreement is fun for me. Yeah. I could completely see that. And you've just that's made really me realize why I like spicy burritos. It's obviously the cognitive dissonance of that. Yeah. And I'm glad that comes across in our show as well, Jordan. <laughs> <laughs> Your brain going, send help. Help, help. <laughs> what are we listening to? And then yeah. the other part of the brain is like, he's fine. He's fine. He's not on fire yet. <laughs> Tomorrow's going to be bad, but he's fine for right now. Yeah, he's okay for now. <laughs> yeah. No, I, I completely agree with you there. I, I, there's a, a weird, morbid fascination about weird things, I think. Yeah. And that's something that I like. But I, I want to believe. I want to believe so bad, but it's so hard to find evidence. Like, Jordan, you were saying the other, the other week about since smartphones have got so good and cameras have got great. Yeah. There's less and less evidence to see. any of the pictures. Yeah. yeah. It, it's sad. Like, I... I think mathematically, 
there's got to be aliens or there's got to be something somewhere. I know the time, time scales and things like that are yeah. a bit strange with how old the universe is, but mathematically there's got to be aliens somewhere. Yeah. Well, that's yeah, the, I, the Drake equation, isn't it? I think so. Yeah. Not the, yeah. not the pop artist. That's a uh, Drake, yeah. I know. Yeah. Different equation. <laughs> it's a different equation. <laughs> uh, I thought Kendrick Lamar and Lamar. So do you know Kendrick Lamar, the, the hip hop guy? Yeah. Yeah. And do you know Lamar, the soul singer from England? Yep. I thought they were the same person for the longest time. I don't know if you guys know who either of those are, but yeah, that's my not the same person. idiot. Kendrick <laughs> Lamar, yes, but not your version. You should yeah. definitely listen to Lamar and you'll see how different they are. <laughs> how much of a moron I am. But yeah, it's, I, like, I like the idea of learning about these things that may or may not be real. It's just the same as learning about a video game universe. You know it's not real, or you know it might not be real, but it doesn't make it again any less interesting. It's mm-hmm. so like engrossing. Yeah, so cool. Yeah. I think we've we've talked about that a lot. Like just storytelling, or you know, when you're immersed in a universe that was created. You could say that about George Lucas, and yeah, he went off the rails with the the re-edits or whatever. But what, or Harry happened? Potter, when you go to Universal Studios, anything where you just there's these universes have their own set of mechanics and rules and things to learn in gaming and, and literature Mm -hmm. and film. It's just so fun to just deep dive into it. I'm with you guys though. Like it's a morbid fascination with the people who are believers. Like I'm, I'm more interested in watching the people who are absolute believers. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I've got dear, dear friends who are absolute believers in Bigfoot, Sasquatch, Yeti, whatever. And Mm -hmm. And I just, I just want to talk to them. Like, yeah, yeah. Uh, when, when Bob Lazar, uh, the guy who worked at Area He's 51, fascinating. when he, he was knows, on Joe yeah. Rogan's podcast, I was like, I want to believe that there's something here. Yeah. Um, cause he's just so down to earth and genuine and doesn't seem to have any other motive. Like, and he's almost yeah, reluctant to tell it. Pre- yeah. He's almost reluctant to admit what he saw. Yeah. He doesn't, he's not like he's trying to big himself up to say like it's not like he's seeking the attention of other people that will grasp on to believing in aliens is he yeah it's, yeah it's weird i don't know so, so i just like watching the communities and the people that that do believe those things and just yeah learning about it from like a psychoanalysis profile but <laughs> anyway dylan do you have any thoughts before we wrap up with our friends we got about a minute and a half yeah oh so many harrison do you want to uh does anyone ever ask you about your bread making because kendall dabbles too <laughs> yeah they do i get a lot of messages harrison actually. is goddamn bread making he's back to bread <laughs> yeah to mashed potatoes yeah. on the same episode I know, oh, man. Man. I know talking my language boy yeah this might, be, uh, uh, this might be our first patreon content maybe we'll save the bread making for later yeah yeah, yeah <laughs> <laughs> that could be fast. But you did tell me in an earlier episode to not put my bread in the fridge. And I appreciate that. No and worries. You don't want to crystallize those starch molecules, boy. He gave me a sciencey reason like that. Why? And I yep. just went, all right. He sounds good yeah. saying it. It's so, the yeah. accent. Yep. It's the accent. It is. It is. Yeah. Oh. So to find out more about our friends and their love of video games and bread, uh, how can we, how can our listeners follow you guys? What's the best place to find you? Reach out. Uh, you can get us absolutely everywhere at Grief Burrito, whether it's Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, Scent, uh, Patreon, everywhere at Grief Burrito. Literally everywhere. Everything. Everything. Thank you guys so much for joining us. This has been a whole lot of fun and you guys are great. We're big fans and we know that some of ours will be yours soon. So uh, thank you for your time and uh, you guys have an awesome day. Stay wholesome. Thank you so much. (laughs) Stay stay wholesome. (laughs) F yeah. Yeah. Fuck yeah.